Hey guys, welcome back. Kirby, do you agree with this quote? Your nine to five will give you a 3% annual raise, or let's just say a 3% raise, but your five to nine can give you a 100% raise. All right, let me, I'm I'm sit, thinking it's still regaining in my head as you said it. You don't have to repeat it. I'm just, all right. So I'm taking it you mean in my nine to five job, which usually, you know, for the most part across the nation is a 3% annual raise, you know? And then that five to nine is just what you do outside of those working hours. Right. Can give you a hundred percent raise. I 100% agree with this. Uh, I'm a living factor of it. Uh, it's the only part I disagree with the statement because it said a hundred percent raise. Uh, you can five, six, eight, 10, 12 exit, and you can still st work at your job. You can exponentially make more outside with a, a nine to five, I mean, a five to nine than your regular W2 job. Uh, and that's, but the, the key element of that, in my view, is you leveraging your W2 nine to five job to create, create other avenues. I mean, I know everybody want to work their nine to five job they want to live to the maximum income that they live or, you know, have their head right at the income line, have their outgo matching their income, excuse me. And then they want uh, a free way to make money. You know, that's why wholesaling is such such a popular thing because, oh, you don't have to put no capital involved. You just got to use sweat equity. Uh, if you save up some of the money from your nine to five job and then you put it into another avenue, i.e., the stock market i mean i even throw crypto in there the crypto market uh buying a business starting a business and contrary to popular belief forget whatever you see on the internet starting a business will cost you money no matter if you got zero percent down seller financing you still need capital to start the business we we'll use that capital from the nine to five job and you can exponentially increase your w2 income that's that's how i look at it but yeah that's what that's what got me out of this crazy world of the nine to five grind yeah i think the only what part i would only part i would push more on is i don't think five to nine is enough time um i get the point of the uh quote but i think it should be five to one five to twelve you know be working until later hours in the night um to make sure that you get up and going with it um wait hold on wait i think i think i i misconstrued it one second when when you said nine to five that's 9 a.m to five that's the job right mm -hmm. that's your that's the wt job i took five to nine meaning 5 p.m to 9 a.m so that's another that's how it, 16 yeah, hours that is how it should that's be how it I, yeah i wonder right. if that's how the quote was uh referred to as but that is how it should be yes um but yeah i think I, th I other than that, I do agree with um, I think you're directly in control of how much money you can make and the amount you make is just dependent on your dedication to it and consistency. And I think once you right. are off the ground and, you know, in the first phase, it might be hard to get off the ground, you know, whatever you might be doing, whether it's starting a side hustle a business or investing. But once you're off the ground. I mean, you see how easy it is to just, you know, pick up another contract, get another property, get another couple properties, get like it just compounds. And then you can see exponential growth from that, that well surpasses what your job can ever afford to pay you. Right. And one thing I want to say is people don't get this misconstrued. Don't sit here and think that I, let's just use real estate when we bought our first real estate, one real estate deal that the cash flow from that real estate deal surpassed our income from a W-2 job. When we bought our first stock to pay the dividend, the dividend started. No, like Alex said, consistency. Alex, I'll tell you, my first stock that I ever bought to pay the dividend was Merck. Mm -hmm. I made a whole grand total dividend-wise or cash flow-wise of $10.38 every three months. Ten dollars thirty-eight cents every three months. So in a year, that's a whole what forty-two, forty, forty-four dollars a year. That's it. 
but consistency meaning keep buying the stock over and over and over again every paycheck every paycheck reinvesting the dividend so the dividend checks will get higher then eventually it will supersede my first rental property that i bought the cash flow on the rental property was around five hundred dollars a month and that was because i got it you know during the right of coming out of the financial crisis pay hella cheap for it and pay cash for it but my first property the cash flow was five hundred dollars a month then the second one it was five hundred dollars a month then over time with the appreciating uh rental prices and things like that the cash flow grew bigger but it's not an overnight thing and people think that's what investing is is oh i just do this one time and then all right now this money is going to pass past my job income no it's staying consistent over and over and over repeating it again compounding it on itself then the income will eventually get there if you need a timeline uh it took me to get my income over just over not the exponential just to get my five to nine income pat to supersede my w2 job income it took me i want to say six years that's what it took me. It took me about six years to get there. Alex, what? Well, I know you're close to the mark. So what? So how long do you say around about it take you? It took you to get there? Yeah, I would say six years too. It depends how I look at it. Because maybe like if if I say when I really started trying to like uh, when I had some things figured out and I started saving more and like had the side hustle going, I was like 19 but when I really started like investing in like stocks and stuff, I was like 21. So however you want to look at it, but four to six years, I would say. Yeah. And it's just being consistent. I mean, one thing that that irks me is people say, hey, I got five hundred dollars. Where can I put this investment? Yeah. And I say I say you better off just uh, going to sell drugs or something. Because the key of it is, all right, you got five hundred dollars. You need to repeat this five hundred dollars, five hundred more times. Yeah, and just keep doing it, and just keep putting it in the right place, and keep staying consistent, keep staying hyper focused, and then that's how you're going to get out. But everybody just think again, lottery ticket. I do it one time, then oh, I'm all good to go. You know, I can go back to my life of ill repute of just spending all my money. No, you have to be dedicated. You have to be laser focused, hyper focused on that objective and then that's how you're going to get out and i see that all the time everybody that you see that's well known that's wealthy that's rich or whatever you want to call them they're hyper focused that it don't matter what avenue they're in i don't care if you're sports you're an actor you're an athlete you're an investor you you're hyper focused growing up going up the corporate ladder all these people are hyper focused over a long period of time not just a one shot one kill type deal where it's just Okay, now I'm done. I did it once. Then, all right, make me the CEO. That's not how it happens. And Alex, I don't, I don't want to go down the rabbit trail, but I'll let you close it out. Yeah, with all that being said, guys, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Don't forget to hit the like button, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.